when you start to prepare your guiding planes, uh, after you've designed your removable partial denture, you've picked your path of insertion. You want to have your cast on your surveyor at the desired path of insertion and you want that right in your cubicle, in your operatory, whenever you prepare your guide planes. You should never ever prepare guide planes intraorally without having the surveyor and your cast at the, the selected path of insertion before you begin. What you will be looking for is to see where the height of contour is, where the analyzing rod is touching the tooth, and also how much space is in between the analyzing rod and the tooth at the level of the free gingival margin. Interorally, we want to make sure that we've got our burr aligned exactly the same. Here you can see I've got it tilted much too far um, toward the, the distal as we move toward the occlusal. So I want to change my angulation of my burr. I don't want to go so far that I get a huge undercut below the height of contour. I want to get it similar to what it looked like. I want to see the amount of space between the tip of the burr at the free gingival margin and the tooth is as similar as what I saw on my cast. Here we're looking back at our cast and this is what you do clinically. You'd look back and forth between the cast. I'd take a look again to see how much space I have here when I'm touching the analyzing rod. How much space I have between that analyzing rod and the tooth at the free gingival margin. I need to make sure that my tilt buckle lingually as I go around the corners is also the same as what I saw on my cast. So not only will I be looking at my tilt mesiodistally, at the same time I will also be looking at my tilt as I come around the corners buccolingually. That has to be the same as well. The other thing that's really important when I'm doing my preparations is that I have a very good strong finger rest. That's critical. Otherwise I could be wobbling as I, as I make my guiding planes. Basically what I want to do is once I have my alignment, I want to go along the distal surface or the proximal surface of the tooth and I want to roll that burr around from side to side usually about from midway on the buccal all the way around the distal to midway on the lingual unless I've got a real um, undercut on the lingual and if I'm going to have a bracing arm there I might go further. Here's a case where I have a tooth that's going to have a distal rest, a mesiobuccal retentive arm and also a lingual bracing arm. The bracing arm is rigid. Remember the only part of a partial, removable partial denture that is flexible is the terminal third of the retentive arm which is going to be on this mesial buccal aspect here. So all of this buccal surface other than the mesial buccal is going to be rigid. I'm going to have a metal minor connector on the distal surface or proximal surface of this tooth. It's going to be rigid. It needs a guiding plane. And I'm going to have a bracing arm here which is totally uh, rigid on the lingual surface. So that when I prepare a guide plane on this particular tooth, I'm going to be moving back all the way along the lingual, the distal, and coming about to the mid buccal in this particular case. You can see that I've rounded the corners because I don't have sharp angles either at the distolingual or the distal buccal. It, in, it uh, keeps the nice round shape of the tooth and I haven't come so far into the tooth that I've started to take off parts of the cusp. It's important to try and minimize the amount of tooth that you remove in your preparations. There are some cases where I won't actually put a lingual bracing arm. In this particular case, we have a mesial rest and there'll just be a minor connector coming up there. In that case, we won't touch this lingual surface of the tooth. There are also other cases where the lingual surface, particularly of the maxillary molars, um, converges uh, or diverges towards the occlusal so that the undercut is right at the free gingival margin. In these particular cases we can place a rigid or bracing arm anywhere on that lingual surface and it won't be in an undercut. In those particular cases we don't need to prepare a guide plane because the height of contour is already low and the rigid bracing arm will still be above that height of contour and it won't need to flex into an undercut. There are some other cases where we might move a guiding plane around a surface in particular this case here, this is in the maxillary arch and it's on the first premolar. Here we've got a clasp that's beginning uh, to come off of the minor connector. It starts high on the buckle. 
If we can move the, the height of contour lower on this tooth, we can play this, place this clasp a little bit lower and it won't show as much. It'll look much better. So there's also some aspects in the anterior preparations where we might go around the mesiobuccal corner in order for us to place the clasp uh, down lower for aesthetic reasons. Let's take a look now at how to prepare some guide planes interorally. Use a long cylindrical medium grit diamond burr from your kit to prepare your guiding planes. Make sure to orient the burr anterior posteriorly and mediolaterally similar to that that you've oriented your analyzing rod to your cast on your surveyor. Use a rolling motion from buccal through proximal to the lingual surface so that you round the corners and preserve the shape of the tooth. Make sure you prefer pre prepare at least a two to three millimeter guide plane before you remove your burr from the tooth. Otherwise, once you go back, you won't have anything to reorient your burr because now your tooth surface is altered from what you see on your cast. In order to put your burr back on against the tooth in the same plane, you'll have, need to have a wide enough guide plane that you can actually parallel or place your burr flat against the tooth. If you've got another tooth that's close by and will also have a guide plane prepared, you can actually use the guide planes you've just prepared using your finger rest to move the burr back and forth between the two teeth to make sure that you've got your guide plane parallel to the one you've just created. Or you can use a similar technique to what we used on the first tooth. Once the teeth are prepared, make sure that you do that for all the other abutments and if you're going to err, make sure that toward, as you move toward the occlusal, things are a little bit too divergent rather than convergent. You'd rather have them draw than be undercut. Here you can see that I'm going back and forth using a good steady finger rest and I can see on the premolar that I've still got a little bit of an undercut so I'll readjust that. When you're finished, you should be able to see that the guiding planes on the, on the mesial of the molar are parallel or slightly divergent compared to the guiding plane on the distal of the premolar. You'd continue to do this. You might need to take an impression, pour up a quick setting uh, cast, and then place that cast on the surveyor to check your guiding planes.